Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a great day. I pray that things are well with you, and I'm praying for the residents of New Jersey, New York, um, up Pennsylvania, uh, in the Philadelphia area, uh, uh, Maryland, where uh, these tor- torrential rain uh, storms, these storms in some places sent uh, three inches of rain in one hour has caused tremendous damage uh, in these areas. People have lost their homes. Uh, people are going through and saints, they need our prayers and they need our support. One of the takeaways that I have when I see these natural disasters and living here in the state of North Carolina, uh, we see them quite a bit during the summer uh, where, you know, our state jets out into uh, the Atlantic and it makes uh, our state somewhat vulnerable uh, to storms, hurricanes and tornadoes and things of that nature. But one of the things that comes to my mind when I see these things and I hear about them is it shows that the biblical record of the flood of Noah is accurate and and true because look at, look at the damage that three inches in one hour caused New York, caused New Jersey, caused these areas. Just uh, one hour of uh, torrential downfall, three inches can shut down U.S. US cities and 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 calls a loss of life. And uh, what would happen if God, the God who controls all these things, allowed for rain to fall uh, to that degree for 24 hours or for 48 hours, so forth and so on? What do you think would happen then? What do you think would happen if God allowed it to rain for 10 days in a row, uh, a, a, a torrential downfall of rain like that. My friends, it would literally wipe us out. What is my point? I'm showing that, you know, all of us need to be a little more quicker to get on our knees. As Americans, we can be quite arrogant and assume that we're in charge of our lives and that uh, it's our life, it's our destiny. You create your own future. You create your own destiny. You got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Got to be your own man and your own woman. Hey, it's my life. I do what I want. All, All of those things. When in reality, every day, We're at the mercy of God. The Bible says it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And thank God that God's mercies are faithful every morning. And I tell you something, he's better to us than we deserve. Look at our nation today as we uh, codify into law, as we endorse, as we began to celebrate things that the God of the Bible calls evil. Look at how we've turned away from the Lord. Look at the things that our children are being taught in public schools and and look at the things that are on television and things that we're celebrating today. Things that God has spoken against. Today we celebrate and then we wonder why uh, these uh, these storms and, and somebody says, Well, it's global warming. No, it's human sinning. And as men turn their back on the Lord, God has a way of getting our attention and showing us just how frail we are, just how insignificant our sophisticated uh, uh, systems are that's supposed to control the water and, 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 and clean out the gutters and let's get ready. And uh, we, we built these, we have our infrastructure in place and we can handle uh, these storms when in reality, my friends, we can't. Every day that we live, every day that we accomplish anything, every day that we get things done, it is because the Lord has provided the environment and the circumstance. He is the one who controls it all. If God so desired, he could fix it where none of us could go back to, uh, could attend work, could go to school, could do anything. So I want to say to you today, 
as we pray for those who are in the path of the storm, as we pray for those who have lost their homes, some have lost loved ones, as we send to organizations, credible ones now, as we sow seeds to help people get back on their feet as we see the number of great Americans who, who get into their cars and their trucks and they mount up and they go to the places where the disasters have taken place. As we see organizations uh, respond to these disasters, organizations like Samaritan Purse and uh, other great church organizations, our own great church, the Church of God in Christ is a church, thank God for our leadership that responds to natural disasters and storms and, and we've been there to help people and we're proud of our track record. But as we uh, see these things, let us all be thankful that God doesn't allow these things to happen every day. And it's because of his mercy. It's certainly not because of our righteousness. It's certainly not because of our faithfulness to him. And I think that so, at, at a certain point, these things should uh, cause us to pay attention, should get our attention and say, you know what? We, we may, if for no other reason than survival, we may need to adhere even more to the teachings and to the scriptures and to the word of God, to the teachings of the God of the Bible. Because I'm telling you, my friends, God controls these things. You can go and buy an electric car. Good for you. You can cut your energy use and it, and it, and we should be responsible citizens and do all we can to, uh, 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 be responsible and taking care of the planet. But let me tell you something. The greatest thing you can do is to serve the Lord, serve the God who made this planet, serve him in righteousness and in truth, because the land mourns, the land rebels when we are immoral on God's green earth. The earth is the Lord's, the Bible says, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. On another note, right before I get to what to my main point, I'm celebrating what happened in Texas and the Supreme Court upholding the Texas law that bans all abortions after six weeks. Now, you know, Nancy Pelosi, and I don't know what it is. I've asked this question before. Maybe some of my Democrat friends who watch, uh, if I still have any, uh, you can call me or tell, write me and ask me, what is it? How did the, the uh, aborted, how does, how did unborn babies, what did they do to just offend Democrats so much? Not all of them, but these top elected officials, they're always the one arguing for the slaughter of the unborn. And I am opposed to it. And, uh, and everyone else who's Holy Ghost feel is opposed to it, who believes the scripture, who is, who's guided by the word of God, you're opposed to it. When your religion means something, you, you got to be opposed to it because you can't, you can't claim that your religion is true and that, and that your relationship, your Christianity, uh, is one that affects how you think and what you believe and then turn around and say you believe in the killing of the unborn. You can't, you can't say that. You can't say that. And so, uh, Texas passed the law and in Texas, uh, you can't have an abortion beyond the six week. I praise the Lord for that. And I know that there's somebody out there saying, well, why are you praising the Lord for that? Uh, we, we shouldn't praise the Lord at all until they, all abortions are banned. No, we take whatever victory we can get. Uh, and then we go to the next one. The, 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 the song says, yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. They won the six weeks. Well, praise the Lord. I believe that God can continue to give the state of Texas uh, a victory like that. And I hope the rest of the country follows the state of Texas. Hint, hint to the state of North Carolina, where I live. So thank God for that good news. And my friends, I thank God for you. Now, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm carrying on a little bit here. I want to say that we're praying for our nation. We're praying for those Afghanis that were left, who helped us, who laid it all on the line for us, 
And did you ever think that you'd hear the U.S. president and our leaders talking about working with the Taliban? All of a sudden, we're treating a terrorist organization like we can trust them, like they're not going to, and that like they're not right now, hunting down everybody who helped, every Afghani who helped um, the U.S., hunting them down, and there are stories of people being killed, women having their nose cut off, and arms and body parts amputated, and dying slow deaths as we packed up and we left the country. And uh, I tell you, my friends, that thing broke my heart. It broke my heart to see it. And, and all Americans, you know, let's not argue the point that shouldn't be argued. All, everybody was for us leaving Afghanistan. When you hear someone who tries to argue that we had to leave, that's a straw man. No one is, is arguing that we uh, didn't have to leave. But the issue is a, a simple one, uh, how it was done. And uh, for the current president to blame the previous president, that doesn't make sense. You stopped everything else that the previous president had started. You, you put us back into the World Health Organization. You put us back into the, all the, of the other organizations that he got us out of. You stopped the, the construction of the wall. You stopped the construction of the Keystone Pipeline. You stopped everything else that your predecessor had started. Well, then why is it that you felt you had to be loyal to this one? This one thing. Come on. Anybody with a brain knows better than that. And the issue was not leaving, but how we left and we left people who were there who took good care of us. I'm praying for an interpreter named Muhammad, who in 2008 saved then Senator Biden and two other senators who were uh, in Afghanistan on a helicopter. The helicopter went down in the snow in the mountains. And this uh, uh, interpreter, uh, the name that they use is Muhammad. I don't know him, but Muhammad uh, saved their lives. And we know it happened because uh, then Senator Biden uh, talked about how they went down, the chopper went down in the snowstorm. He boasted on, on the event. And yet they left that man there. And according to the Wall Street Journal and other publications, he has reached out uh, to our president and said, please remember me. Please remember me and my family. Get me out of here. My friends, um, uh, this is not America. This is not the way that we do. 20 years ago, we went into Afghanistan. 20 years ago, we went up against the Taliban. 20 years later, we leave Afghanistan with the Taliban still in charge. And with them now wearing our uniforms, driving our equipment, celebrating in the streets, they beat, you talking about David and Goliath, they beat America. America took tail and run. Now, I don't want to make too much of this from a political standpoint, but this, I see a spiritual thing in this. You see, when you forsake God, little nations destroy you. you do you remember when the children of Israel, under the great military leader Joshua, went up against I, and they didn't pray, they didn't seek the Lord, they just thought that I would be easy to defeat? Some pronounce it A-I, but it's, uh, it's spelled A-I, it's pronounced I. I put a whooping on uh, Joshua and his mighty army because, why? Because they didn't seek the Lord and God's favor wasn't upon them. Now you can, you can say what you will or may, it's judgment when a uh, terrorist organization runs America out of town, out of the country. And uh, and we leave Americans behind when the president of the United States promised over and over and over that he would not leave anyone behind. And we left Americans and interpreters and people who laid it all on the line. For us, we left them behind. Oh, we need to pray about this situation. We need to pray. We need to pray. And it, it wouldn't matter to me who the president is, whether it's a Republican president or a Democrat president. And as I remind you so often, I am uh, an independent. But uh, this thing is sad. And some of us have things to say when it's uh, someone we like. And there's this strange silence when it's someone we don't like. But uh, we need to pray 
that God would have mercy. And we're praying for those Afghan citizens, the women over there. By the way, Gary, where are the women's groups? In America, we got all these women's groups who are supposed to be concerned about the welfare of women. Where are they now? We can't hear their voices. They're not speaking up. Where is the National Organization for Women? What are you saying? Because these women are going to be slaughtered over there and, and these uh, so-called American leftist women's organizations have nothing to say. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for those people. They're human beings. They're human beings. And Afghanistan has a large, in in the Middle East, it has one of the largest Christian communities of any country over there, if not the largest. So these are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need to pray for them. Now, tonight, 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 I want to invite you to join me at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for... Bible study. Yes, Bible study. Now, I'm excited. I'm, I'm talking about fighting the right fight the right way. We're going to continue and we're going to kind of take a deep dive into the whole armor of God. Now, I'll see you here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight. May God's choice blessings be yours. And my friends, go out and make it a great day. And listen. Look for ways to help those who have suffered and who have been affected by the storm. We're going to send up prayers. We're going to send up prayers. We're going to send up Judah and we're going to send money to help those who have been adversely affected. Money, goods, clothing, whatever you can do, do something. Do something. Uh, don't just say it's, it's bad what happened, but do something and the Lord will bless you real good. Make it a great day. See you tonight.